I'm going to start with a poem that takes place in the Brooks Range um, in Alaska, where I live. The sow bear ripped down the boat tarp, scraped black fur into twisted wing nuts. That bear eased her itch and disappeared. And still she stayed near while we hiked uphill to fill our jug, the spring covered over with autumn's leavings. We skimmed clear frosted growth floating, sank our jerry cans, felt them pull deeper. The surface teeled around wrists stiff with cold. Bubbles shook free from river weeds, rose up, tumbled downstream. The still place returned to reflection. Birch startled us with gold so loud our bodies flared like fireweed gone to seed. Twilight put its slant on the afternoon. Four loons swam near our seaplane, nudging the strange relative who would not speak. The moon had eaten itself down to the rind, and in that sliver, that lingering of autumn, stars borrowed the voices of loons. Tundra swans twine necks among snowflakes vanishing into evening's river. Past breakup, tablecloths of rotten ice nest along the bank. Halfway, swan wings open, then settle in like second thoughts. Maybe they flew north over Minto, traced halos over brooding ponds saw from far up without touching the world is hard and will stay hard a while longer. The best treasure came to us mostly after rain when the arroyo rearranged itself to suit the wet. We'd have to kneel at least or sit quietly for a long time. This meditation turned us into visionaries, ones who could see what lay buried not far beneath. Red glints, stones precious because they disappeared. Sand rubies, deep red and transparent one moment, flecks diving out of sight the next. In this way, we learn to savor what's always there, especially when we can't see it. In this way, we learn to love ephemera, the sand of the ancient ocean, this earth, this life, everything loaned for a brief time to us. After the divorce, things slid downhill fast. Our whole household was an arroyo collapsing in on itself. Dad married crazy Marcia, a bottle blonde with a serious affection for prescription painkillers. We nicknamed her daughters for their passions, the nympho, the pyro, the klepto. <laughs> Eating an orange at Marcia's house was a project. First we'd post a sentry, then one kid would lift an orange from the bowl on the table. That kid would walk fast into the bathroom. Everybody who wanted in on it came into the bathroom, too. We'd peel the fruit, divide the sections exactly evenly, you cut and I choose, then swallow the fruit almost without chewing. We washed our hands and faces, brushed our teeth. We flushed the orange peels, wiped the counter. When Marcia came out of her room in the late afternoon, she'd know right away something had changed. She count and count the oranges. Eight. There should be eight. Seven, we'd say. This time, you bought lucky seven, remember? The day of the moonwalk, I had a date. 
Chuck Quimby came early to pick me up. We couldn't leave the house, though, because Marcia had an episode. She'd plucked out every hair in both eyebrows and held a stencil high across her forehead to pencil in new ones. She couldn't get them right. Couldn't. Her hands wouldn't cooperate. Irritation slid into hysteria and Marcia got clingy. I pictured techniques they taught in junior life-saving, the ways to keep a panicked swimmer from drowning you too. We erased the jagged arches over her perplexed eyes. We fed her crushed ice. Her face, bald and sallow, sank in on itself. She looked powdery, like the surface of the moon, marked by boots, by men. Finally, she slept. One small step for a man. En Día de los Muertos, people set up altars to welcome back those who've gone before. In the Sonoran Desert, where the dead are said to cherish fragrances, paths of marigolds help the ancestors find their way. It's not mournful at all. Music, singing, dancing, a candlelight vigil, huge spreads of food. After the dead have tasted their favorite dishes, living people feast on homemade tortillas hot off the comal. Husky tamales, meat, green corn, sweet, skull-shaped candies, breads, cookies, the gritty bone dust of panocha. Saladitos turn every mouth into a watering hole. Fry bread starts out flat, then puffs in hot oil, its emptiness honeyed. On the altars, pictures of loved ones out of reach, loved ones forever the age they were when they left, tokens of lives, a fishing lure, skate key, spurs, Carved bate for frothing hot chocolate. Pierced earrings. Locket. Dancing shoes, size tiny. A lizard skin cowboy boot planted with jumping cactus. Calavera candles flickering. Calacas, skeletons riding motorcycles, getting married having babies, skeletons at typewriters, skeletons on the roller coaster, skeletons playing billiards, every ball on the table, a skull, calacas riding horseback, their holsters flapping, calacas playing cello and violin, the tune just beyond our hearing. Thank you. Thank you.